and staying with it. I've taken the furnace out because we still need to figure out what's going on with that. And while the furnace is out, typically the propane would want to just come out. And that's no bueno. So what I did was bought a few parts so that I can create a shutoff valve so that if I need to take the furnace out again I'll be able to turn the valve off without turning off all the propane to the whole rig. Now my local hardware store did not have direct fitting a direct match for uh, just hooking just a valve on to the existing flare fitting so what I did was I bought a 3 8 inch flare, a half inch iron pipe, then a half inch iron pipe, two 3 8 inch flare, and then a 3 8 inch flare swivel. So there's a little piece of copper pipe in there and these sides twist independently. Now on the flare fittings we're not going to use any pipe tape but for the iron pipe one, we're going to use the appropriate yellow, um, appropriate yellow thread tail tape. securely under the flare fitting. Now there is a female flare that's connected to the RV and so uh, that's going to connect to one of these and I'm going to make sure that the direction that I have this in is going to be easy to operate when it's connected here. So I'm going to go ahead and this flare fitting on there, like that. I'll tighten that with a wrench in a moment, and then I can turn it on and off. fitting. Ultimately, so this is my furnace. Ultimately, this is going to thread on there like that. And again, when I'm in there, I'll tighten that down. Uh, and then the existing pipe in there right now. We'll connect to this side and I'll be able to turn that on and off at will so that if I do need to take this out I'll be able to get this out of the way still have feet function of all the rest of the uh, propane appliances inside our RV. I'm going to go and I'm going to go and install this right now so that I can do just that be right back. So now that I have that all hooked up, I can turn the propane back on in the RV and I can get to diagnosing my furnace. But how am I going to connect? How am I going to diagnose this if I don't have propane to create a flame? That's where this comes in. Uh, this I picked up at Home Depot. Um, basically, it has an 11 inch water column regulator on it and it's a short hose but it has a gas grill connection which is listed on here as a 5 8 18 UNF I'm not 
exactly sure what that is, but when I threaded this on in, so Home Depot has like the little test fitting section next to the brass, brass fittings. Um, this threaded right on. So the theory is that 5 8 dash 18 UNF is equivalent to a 3 8 inch flare. I can connect this to a 20 pound propane tank. So I wanted to just show you how I was able to perform a bench test of my furnace. I've got my 20 pound propane tank on the ground and that uh, connector hose that I got from Home Depot. And then I kind of have everything just kind of uh, electrical tape twisted and electrical tape together. I didn't do any soldering here. And then for the thermostat, I said, hey, give me a continuous call for heat. So basically this is the same as the thermostat saying, hey, it's too cold, warm me up. And then, so that's all the connections. The behavior that this furnace is exhibiting, hopefully you'll be able to hear all the different things going on. Fan kicks on. It's off. Waits a few seconds. And then it tries again. It won't stay on. Interestingly enough, though, the diagnostic LED is right there isn't coming on. It's just not working right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and test the uh, limit switch. I believe that's probably what's going on. And so we'll take that out, put an O meter on it, and see what we're up against. I found the diagnosis procedures on Dinosaur Electronics website. Uh, this is not sponsored by them at all, but I happen to just find the information there. And so they gave kind of three methods that we could use to test a limit switch. And one is by ohms, one is by volts, and uh, one is by like a test lamp. So I'm gonna do the two uh, ohms and volts ones and hopefully we'll be able to make some diagnosis here. The first one is by volts, and what it asks for is to go ahead and put the leads of your voltmeter onto both of the terminals of the limit switch. So that's what we're going to try to do. So I have my leads connected to the limit switch. I've got the voltmeter on and we'll go ahead and turn this on. The website said that it should be in the neighborhood of less than 0.1 volts. So we'll see what we get. So that says 0.7 millivolts. And while the flame was on, it jumped up to like 3 point something millivolts. Now the next test that is recommended by the Dinosaur website is to disconnect the wires from the limit switch so that basically the only thing that you're 
checking is in fact that switch. What I've done instead is removed all of the plugs from the sail switch and the circuit board so that I'm equivalently testing just the limit switch. Now, they say that if the ohms, the resistance is less than one ohm, sorry, less than 0.1 ohm, then your limit switch is probably good. Now, we're just sitting here, and it's kind of all over the place. Now, that could be because of the additional heat that was brought in by the um, running it momentarily, but it looks to me like this limit switch is outside of its standard range. I was able to find a new limit switch on Amazon, so we're going to try to install it now, and hopefully that's going to make this furnace work. Now this limit switch goes right into these two, this hole right back here, and it just has two screws that hold it in place. Now let's get a propane bottle hooked up and try this out. I still have all my wires hooked up the same way I did when I did the initial testing, even though it's been a few days. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the propane tank. Then I'm going to go ahead and turn the furnace on. Absolutely disappointing because it's performing the same issues as it did before. I guess there's uh, more testing involved. In front of me, I have removed the burner assembly from the inside of the furnace, and the next thing I'm going to check on is the electrode. This is a single point uh, probe, so it does the sparking and the flame sense. And it's held to this assembly by one screw. And then it just pops out like this. I'm going to take a piece of Scotch Brite pad and clean this thing off. I'm just kind of get it all the way in between and get all the edges. And all the way down to the end, shine it up a little bit. And it kind of clips in place like that. I'll get the screw back in. The other thing that you'll need to check is the spacing between the two leads on this probe and manuals that I found say that needs to be an eighth of an inch so I have myself an eighth of an inch drill bit and we're a little bit close here so let's see if I can bend that out of the way a little bit and that looks good. This whole assembly is held in with three screws. Um, it's held in with three screws and there's a, some sort of gasket in there that seals the burn chamber. And you'll need a relatively long bit to manage this. So I just kind of assemble some extension like that. So 
something to take note of for future diagnosis. So if I turn this furnace on right now with this end open, um, when it's in the rig, there's an exhaust pipe and a panel to kind of separate that intake out to uh, intake and exhaust. Turn this on. It's going to kick on, run for a couple of seconds, and then kick off. I've got a piece of pipe here. I'm going to separate the intake from the exhaust a little bit. Take the pipe off, it stops. So I think that's definitely related. It's kind of unfortunate that bench testing can get it to actually take the exhaust off the rig, which it's fully encased. I, so I don't know whether this is a issue, you know, if my other igniter would be fine. I just thought of this pipe trick. And so I want to go ahead and get this installed back into its proper place. And we'll see if uh, we can cause it to work properly. Ultimately, when I got the furnace installed back into the underbelly of the RV. It seemed to be working properly so long as I had appropriate gas flow and appropriate exhaust and air intake. Um, so I think I will have to remember if I ever need to diagnose again that I'll need to ensure that I have the appropriate uh, exhaust piping in place to separate that. And I think what's happening is the exhaust is coming out and getting recirculated so it's got the the burn propane to the water and carbon dioxide messing with the air fuel ratio and causing the uh causing the flame to sputter out so looks like i have a fully functioning furnace at this point and hopefully keeping our fingers crossed we'll be good as winter approaches that's, uh, that's all I've got for today. Uh, my name's Todd from the Alcohol Free RV, where we have adventures and do repairs, mods, and upgrades along the way. See you next time.